Future generations will scarce remember those who perished tonight, and history will acclaim the greatness of Tutankhamun for saving the lives of so many. Ancient Egypt, and I think the Tutankhamun story in particular, is interesting because the amount of intrigue and drama and revolutionary change that's surrounding the time when this boy takes the throne to the time that he dies was considerable. What do they say about drama, that you, you need to have conflict? This is the perfect time period. We've always said from the beginning, it doesn't have to be completely accurate to touch life. That's impossible. There's too much we don't know. And we have, in, in order to make a movie, you have to dramatize certain things. But we want to make sure it's historically accurate, that within the world we're creating, that could really happen. Fate is not what you are given. It is what you take. Tutankhamun is so intensely popular. I think most of it has to do with the tomb and the discovery of that tomb in 1922 by Howard Carter. When they found the tomb, they, they documented everything. And so you can see the amount of canes that he had or the kind of brooches he had. And this is all things that he would specifically be buried with because he wanted them in his afterlife. That small, non-orthodox tomb was just packed with objects made of solid gold, with objects made of electrum, with imported precious woods that were painted and plastered. He dies so unexpectedly that his tomb isn't finished. And so they bury him in this tomb meant for a private person in the Valley of the Kings. It's an unusual tomb. It's very aberrant. It doesn't fit with the typical royal pattern. His life is cut short before he's 20, he's dead, which is perfect for drama. Everything is amplified. It does look like he died with trauma. has a titanic element that we know the ship is going down and we want to see how it's going to happen. Egypt, it was really at the height of its power. It was really one of the few places that had consolidated power. And it was a time of real upheaval because his father, Akhenaten, had disbanded many of the gods. Akhenaten instituted some very, very radical religious changes. And those religious changes started by reproducing himself as a god of light. And as he does so, he becomes exclusionary. And he starts to hack out the names of other gods. And so there is this notion, and it's a possibility, that Akhenaten was the first monotheist in the entire world. It certainly seems that he's the first religious fanatic. His father died, and Tut took over at eight years old. His handlers, starting with the vizier I, implemented the, the old religion back. Give us back the old gods. The decision rests with the pharaoh. Then it is done. This could be one of the few time periods for which we have evidence that a king was actively controlled and controlled by men. This situation is highly unusual for ancient Egypt because that just invites problems. You didn't want to have an uncle in charge or a general in charge or some other man in charge because they could create a coup and take over. Whom can I trust? No one. I was one of Akhenaten's most loyal supporters. And it's interesting to see I then help move Egypt back into the direction of orthodoxy, back to traditionalism. I wanted power, was ambitious, and was setting himself up for that power. He was a formidable man. There's no outright evidence of coercion during Akhenaten's time. However, the people that he rewards the most are soldiers in the military. Horam Heb is one of the leaders of this military group, this, this social power. By the time Akhenaten dies, he's probably your chief military leader. And as you move into the reign of Tutankhamun, he really takes the reins of military power. Um, so he's absolutely essential. This is the opportunity to eliminate the Mitanni from history. The Mitanni are an ethnic group in Syria, and they actively push against the Egyptian imperial machine. So. Yeah, they're in active aggression with one another. You're not ready to lead these men into battle. I will fight for my people, with my men and with you. Kings were proud of their, their military exploits. They did train, and they trained in archery. They trained riding their chariots and did actually face the, the enemy in combat. Can there be victory? It will take the will of all the gods combined. So there was this woman, Anka Sen Amun, and this is, we think, a half-sister of Tutankhamun. And it may seem very strange that brother-sister would then marry each other, but in the 18th dynasty, it was a very expedient way of keeping the wealth in the family. 
They're both marrying each other at the very moment when they might be able to procreate children. He's only nine years old, and, and she may be a little bit older, maybe she's 11 or 12 or something like that. It is possible that they did have this sexual union, were able to procreate and, and have children with one another, but that they were unsuccessful in seeing those children live. In his tomb are two fetuses that were stillborn, who died in utero. We have no rightful heir. This gives others reason to claim their right to the throne. I have no doubt they maneuver even now. Women who were beautiful could be brought in, so non-royal women were brought into the harem all the time. He may love you, but I am his queen. It is possible that a woman in the right place at the right time with the right healthy son could see herself launched into this extraordinary position as mother of the king. I'm a commoner. No, you are far from common. All the people that tried to maneuver him into oblivion are themselves forgotten. Yet, through a minor movement of history and sand, he's the one who's celebrated, he's the one who's remembered. The Egyptians were so brilliantly committed to sustaining their civilization, they did succeed. I mean, look at the pyramids, look at how thrilled we are to discover any fragments that they might have left behind, put them in museums, and thousands of people queue to see them, and therefore to bring this colossal civilization to life is quite thrilling.